Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gonna do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Don't ever say that we gonna be doing that for our artists and for our people. Yeah, we came from the street. We always working, Jack. Say you looking for the best? Boss talk. We ain't worried about the rest. Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. This is your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right, right now and go ahead and like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat. But most importantly, go to our Patreon channel because that's where you're going to see our full length interviews. And on our YouTube channel, we have a YouTube membership section. All our full length interviews drop there first. So if you want to be the first to see it before he clips it, just go ahead and sign up for our membership. Don't say I didn't tell you. Definitely gonna get them clips. I gotta chop, chop it up like steak. Make mm -hmm. sure y'all eat it right, properly feed it to you the right mm -hmm. way. You niggas ain't like ready steak. for the, the full interview yet. Mm -hmm. Yet. You know what I'm talking about? Hey man, listen man, we here with HHF. If y'all can't say it, HHF. You know what I'm talking about, man? They in the building, man. Pippin Ken in here one more again, man. Taylor. Say that Frusell. name, Frusell. Frusell. I didn't want to mess that up. Mess Taylor Frusell, man. Nice to have you guys on the set, man. We here in ATL. Um, man, Boss Talk 101 and pulled up when they did some great interviews. Now we're getting down to the good ones. That's right. Yeah, the best ones. The, the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> Pippin Ken is the gold of interviewing, y'all. I'm going to just let y'all know, man. <laughs> Me and this dude that did that millions of views together because millions. we just got that chemistry. You know what I'm talking about? But we're going to get into it today. Taylor, you so you're the publicist? I am. For, for HHL? I am the publicist, the international publicist for the hip hop fraternity. Wow. Yeah. That's that's huge, man. Huge. So, just how, okay, so how did you end up uh, linking with HHL? Honestly, everything in life that has ever been given to me has been given to me because I have proved myself. I have proved my worth. Me and this man, Ken, have been seeing each other. We've been passing each other. I've been watching his organization. He's been watching mine. I did an event last year called the BET Experience, wrapped in with the BET Hip Hop Awards. It was a humongous event. Four days, four different venues, and thousands of people. When he seen that I put that together by myself, after that, he knew in my mind I worked for him. So I worked for him before I was hired, right? Wow. Um, and then we just, I stayed consistent. I stayed on my grind. Uh, we did some stuff in South by Southwest. I did another big weekend, um, plugged this artist in, plugged his people in. And since then, we've been rolling. We're three events in. We've been working a couple months. I uh, got some new projects coming out with him that we're doing. But he put together the autobiography, Making of a Celebrity, you know, with Boosie and Ice-T. So... It's been a short time, but we're going for a long time. Man, just, you you know, punch word, uh, Boosie. Like, um, me and, I was supposed to be interviewing Boosie. Remember you was going to yeah, have me to come yeah. down and interview Boosie when y'all was going around doing the book uh, tour. But the news that I have seen, I've been watching, mm. and man, it hadn't been good news. It's been some crazy stuff going on. They done free Boosie really is, the, Boosie. is, is what, what now free we have Boosie. to start to look at, man. Like, But you guys had so much work going on together, man. Like, How does that affect the way that the work is going to have to flow now that he's incarcerated? Well, I called the gentleman from uh, Simon, Simon & Schuster. And I asked him, I said, okay, where do we go from here? And he said, Ken, you know, Boosie book done so well that we already recouped it, our wow. investment. So we want you to continue to doing what you're doing. We understand that you have the uh, making of the autobiography of a celebrity. So basically, Boosie did not lose his big book deal. You know, a few people asked me, did Boosie lose his book deal? No, he didn't lose his book deal. What happened was, you know, we just talked to the people, and they gave us their perspective, you know. And... uh you know, anytime, you know, like in the case, like my man Lonnie, who's the uh, hip hop fraternity management, he's the director of management. He also managed or works with R. Kelly, right? So he's a part of our organization. And he came to us to do a book on R. Kelly. And the publishing company said, not just yet, because it's too much controversy right. surrounding the situation. You know, when Boosie uh, got into it with the other guy, you know, about the little stuff they was talking about, you know, uh, the LGBTQ, LBGT community. You know, I, I don't want to mess it up. The know? alphabet, LGBT the alphabets will get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah, but, but when Boosie LGBT. got into it with uh, this guy, you know, Simon Schuster might want to, they were thinking about, you know, uh, dropping a book. 
Yeah. So you know, it is situations where in 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 the book world, in the literary world, we got we call a morali- morality clause. So you have to have a certain amount of morality. You have a, have a certain amount of moral character in order to stay with companies like Simon Schuster because it's owned by CBS. You know, it's a billion dollar company. So a lot of things that artists do and authors do is a reflection on the company. And being that Boosie's with my literary agency, the Hip Hop Fraternity Literary Agency, along with Ivy Love Literary Agency with Steve Love, you know, it's our duty to make sure that we keep Boosie in the right perspective, you know, in terms of the business. Correct. So uh, from a business standpoint, Simon Schuster is going to continue to put the book out because it was done before he had this untimely, unfortunate uh, situation. So, yes, Boosie Book is still for sale. You can get it at Amazon.com. That's you right. Can get Go it get it. Anywhere uh, books are sold, books a million, Burns and Nobles, and it's now available on paperback. And we are currently working on the Boosie autobiography uh, docu-series where we will actually show people from scratch to finish how the book was, the deal was done, you know, some of the ups and downs of the deals. You know, we got a lot of celebrities in there like Ice-T, we got Tariq Nasheed, mm-hmm. uh, Rick Ross, and a few other people, you know, that's going to be in there, you know, giving their opinions on various subjects that surround Boosie's situation, you know, the death penalty, mass incarceration, and other things that, you know, a lot of people don't even talk about, right? So, yeah, Boosie's book is still in effect. Boosie did not lose his book deal. You know, it having affected the situation. That sounds good. Let's go. But, so, uh, I just, the thing I, I look at, man, because when you're dealing with business, man, you know, it's like, it's a scary thing when people start, you know, I remember <clears throat> back when, you know, and I know when PMC ended up going to prison and going, mm-hmm. and, and when Boosie went the first time, like, when you start to see people who you connected with, going through these cases, how does that affect you, like far as these being people that you are really connected to? Well, you know, Pimp C, I was there when he got a case, got his case, you know. Uh, before they rolled down on Boosie, I was just at Boosie's house, you know, wow. like literally a month before they actually in- incarcerated him. So it's like me being a ex-convict doing 10 years total in the penitentiary, you know. I, I kind of identify with these brothers and I know a lot of it come from uh, young aggression, you know, but uh, later on, you know, I'm going to talk about it more, but, you know, I think that a lot of these young people, you know, that's in the entertainment business need to understand that, uh, you know, they created a, a empire, a powerhouse, hip hop, and uh, it's a lot of people have a vested interest in bringing that empire down. You know, it's like every empire, you know, you had the Shaka Zulu Empire, you know, you had the Roman Empire, you had the Greek Empire, you had the Egyptian Empire. And all those empires was brought down because of envy, jealousy, malice, hate, slander, lewdness, murder, and theft. You know, so we have to understand that it's a vested interest on behalf of certain people, you know, whether it's systemic racism or whether it's white supremacy or whether it's just, you know, hatred. People are going to target these young brothers and sisters who are making all this money. Because the worst thing for an officer to see is a young man driving a Rolls Royce that costs a half a million dollars. He might make $30,000 in salary. Let me ask you this. When he was leaving his house a lot of times, we seen him getting pulled over by the police. As soon as he would leave his house, and then he would go live, and he would he would pretty much uh, you know call him out for stopping him. Uh, falsely accusing him, say different things to pretty much push the buck to say, hey, man, he was singing some of his songs where he slandered, you know, the police. Like, Mm -hmm. do you think that these things are things that are they're watching from an over level? Or do you feel like these guys are, 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 or do you feel like this incident alone caused the issue? Okay, I got one word for you. OJ, right? Yeah. So when you think about OJ Simpson, and you think about him getting away with murder, beating a murder trial, you know, the criminal justice system is like a game. You know, the district attorney, all these people, you know, they in cahoots with one another. So, you know, they look at it like a loss for the uh, California uh, judicial system was a loss for the entire judicial system. That's why Vegas punished OJ for what California couldn't punish him for. So when you think about Boosie, 
you think about him beating a murder trial and beating the death penalty. It's a lot of officers that watch his social media as well. So they are upset with the fact that this man beat the system. You know, and when somebody beats the system, what that does, that sends shockwaves through the system to let the other in, inmates and convicts and potential, you know, people that's going to get arrested, that the system can be beat. And to them, you know, they the Teflon Don. The system think they the Teflon Don. They the all be all, all be all because, you know, of course, you know, the congressman, the senator, the legislators, they make the laws. And the laws is always in favor of the system because you have a bureaucracy. You have millions of people incarcerated, right? So when you think about all these people that's incarcerated, uh, Brother E, you got to think about it. they are incarcerated at the expense of jobs. Wow. People are working for the system. If everyone was to change up and become a Muslim or become a Christian or a Buddhist or a Taoist or, or, or any type of religion, a Scientologist or whatever, the system would crumble overnight. And what they're going to do with all those jobs? What they're going to do with the lawyers and the police officers and the correctional officers and the probation officers? This is a larger conversation that we're not having. You know, that this is systemic racism. You know, the criminal justice system is designed to attack people like Boosie. And when people like Boosie beat the system, that's why San Diego dropped the charges and the feds came in. Because, Immediately. Because Immediately. the feds have a different, oh. a different play. And we're going to talk about that when we get the artists. Uh, uh, when we talk, when I bring the artists up, because I want I want them to hear. I want all First artists hand. to hear. So you know, but man. Uh, so so when you when you guys, uh, what, what okay? Do we want to talk about the the documentary now? Oh uh, yeah, we can talk because, about the documentary. because I because I, I, I know that you were working on something big with Boosie, and you know what I mean. And and to to be able to work with someone you would think they would have to be out but you guys had you guys finished the documentary before he before yeah. he was in before he was locked up well or before he was now he's going through the situation they no bonded him he don't have a bond mm. uh they're, they're you know this the federal uh, the feds picked him up the alphabet boys yeah. so this is a this is huge you know so now that that's happened you don't know you got different st people that was working with him on different projects and now these projects like when jamie fox got sick they come to a, a halt a screeching halt and and now people putting stunt doubles and all kind of stuff in well We're not letting that happen yeah but but well, just fortunately, fortunately. let us know what's going on with the documentary okay i'm gonna talk to them i pass the ball to miss uh miss taylor so fortunately for us we had 13 hours, contrary to popular belief. You know, Boosie is under contract with us. You know, we're not just, you know, so we are contractually, you know, connected. You know, we have a contractual agreement that, you know, we can promote, market, push, do what we want to do with the project. So one of the things that uh, we were negotiating, when we were negotiating, when we was in the boardroom in Simon Schuster was to be able to create a mechanism with, in which, you know, the hip hop fraternity, uh, literary agency along with Simon & Schuster can promote and make their money back. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with the Boosie Project is we're documenting the entire process. All that stuff you hear on Vlad and all these uh, interviews, I had that stuff way, way before Vlad or any of these other uh, interviews before he was on Drink Champs or, or he was on whatever, uh, Beehive or, or, or 85 Soft. We had that same content. But we structuralize it. We put it in a way where people can actually get into, you know, what what is what's the process of doing a legitimate corporate deal? And what is the process of seeing somebody like Boosie who transitioned from being a thug to being a, mo a mogul? So we, we, we tabulate it and we actually video that, you know. So that's what you're going to see. You're going to see Boosie, you know, his family and friends and stuff like that. You're going to see them actually coming into... Being, you know, coming from the ghetto streets to the executive streets, from the ghetto blocks to the Wall Street stocks, you know, own his own liquor, you know, putting out books, own his own cologne, you know, and this is all because of Steve Love and myself, you know, when we bring the book deals and the liquor deals to the table, you know, uh, James over there, Rap Snack, you know, Steve O, you know, when you think about that, you gotta think about Steve O, you think about uh, the Boosie books and all, you gotta think about Pippin Ken or Ken Ivy and Steve O, hip hop fraternity, you know, so that's what we do. So we're gonna document that and we're doing the same thing with IC. So it's called a docu series. 
And Miss Taylor can talk about it a little bit more in depth. Later. Wow, let's go, Taylor. Yeah, well, this is an amazing thing that we're, what we're doing here. A docu-series, The Making of a Celebrity, guys. This is really the autobiography, excuse me, The Making of an Autobiography of a Celebrity. That is the exact title of it. And we're going to start Boosie. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna feature Ice T. We got the real Rick Ross um, in it, giving us all the game and the knowledge. And this is really to empower the youth, empower the community, show people that they can make it again. Go from the streets to the boardroom. Go from the streets to the executive room without even having to change your name or your claim to fame. You can do it in your industry. It's always something called choices. We talked about this yesterday, and the choices that. Um, some of the men in our community have, may have led them into different places and spaces, but seeing this docu-series and reading Boosie's book will show you as a young black man in the industry in a hard knock life that they grow up in, they can make it out and they can be positive. The only issue is the target that is on some of our backs, some of our young black men's back because they're able to beat the system or because they're a threat because they're making multi, multi billion. See, I learned this from the best Mr. Ken Ivey the hip hop industry is one of the only industries that has several multi-billionaires black from this industry alone i'm talking about jay-z i'm talking about p diddy i'm talking about kanye west and, and even look dre. what they did in dr dre and look what they did with kanye west they tried to strip him from everything that he owned when it came to his name and his his claim to fame and fashion because he made a statement. So this is something that happens in our community and we have to protect it. But one thing about me being a publicist, I organize the campaigns and the marketing. And what we're gonna do for this docu-series, we're gonna go to all the colleges, we're gonna go to all the theaters, we're gonna go to all the cities and states. See, the hip hop fraternity is in 32 different cities and states and we're growing today. So we're gonna hit all of those markets and we're gonna make sure that they not only get a book, but they also see it because we're real visual. You know, it's hard in, in today's society to sit down and focus on something for more than two hours because you got social media, you just got all these different things, but we're real visual and wanna watch it. So this docu-series is gonna, number one, impact the community. Number two, it's gonna keep people captivated because you, you, you read it, but when you see it, the rawness, like there's, clips of Boosie in the studio doing his thing, rolling up and just talking to us. That's what we missing. We're missing that connection. We're, people talk about cancer, but they don't talk about chemo. They don't talk about the struggle. You don't see the people in the hospital. What you did just over the past week was legendary, right? Going to the hospital and doing an interview live in the hospital. See, this is what this docu-series is going to bring you. It's going to make you feel like you're there and you're in tune. So we're going global with this thing. Um, we're going to take it as far as far as it's going to go. We got a connection here with Africa with our guy Vado, COO of the Hip Hop Fraternity. So of course we're going to Africa. We're going to drop this docu-series and we're going to relaunch this book. We're going to make sure everybody knows about the Hip Hop Fraternity, Pimpin' Ken, Boosie, Rick Ross, and Ice-T. Man, that's dope. That's live. Um, so when you think about Boosie, you know, beating cancer... Mm. They they say he he spent ninety thousand dollars when they was asked because that's what moved him up the line. Mm. Uh, when I interviewed, uh, I think it was a half a million. Uh, it, no, it was ninety thousand oh, for 90. for something that they were, had to, a procedure they had to f perform. He had to have mm. that. It might have been more, but they had needed that up front. Mm. And uh, from what I what am I right? You're right. Okay, and and um, the thing you have to understand is everybody don't have that kind of cheddar to make things better but at the end of the day he still was going to the booth he still was working on his album with uh, uh, Be, Be Done and G Luck down in Houston I interviewed those guys and they talked about how he would come there as he was going through his procedure and keep working like he was wow. you know the thing you don't understand is God got something in us man that pretty much drives us to basically get the gift out of us that we have in us in a timely manner. We don't know why sometimes we do certain things, mm -hmm. but he already has a mission and a plan that's bigger than what we could even see. That's right. So that's the whole game, you know what I'm saying? So, But to see him have to go through this all over again, because I know it brings back memories now, because he got home, his daughter, now he spent a lot of time with those kids, you he know. Did, yeah. But the thing is, now to go back through this same situation again, to take the family back through this, I know it got to be a tough one on him, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, what, uh, have you been able to speak with Boosie or any of, since this happened? No. Uh, or I, any uh, other family members? I talked to a lawyer uh, in San Diego, and uh, I tried to deploy her, you know, down to the, uh, 
the justice system to see if she can find out some information for us. And she was able to report back to me. She's a hip hop fraternity affiliate as well. So she was able to report back to me some of the things that was going on and she was like, you know, Ken don't look too good, you know. So wow. uh, basically, like I said, I'm gonna talk to you that further on the interview, but when it comes to cancer, right? You know, I had aunties that died from cancer, you know, uh, my uh, sister husband, Henry, he died from cancer. I know that Miss... Uh, uh, 14 uh, years, or 13 years cancer-free. Wow. She had cancer. I remember you was my telling me about that. My niece died at three years old from cancer. Cancer is whew. So cancer is definitely something that we need to really address in the African-American community. But, you know, you know, uh, Brother E, nothing just happens. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. You know, God, you know, is a, he, he, he's a scientist. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the trees, right? You never think about the ultraviolet rays of the sun that beams on the tree that give us its, 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 its ability to uh, emit oxygen, you know? And we never think about the precipitation and condensation right. that is created to create the moisture and give the trees the life. And, you know, we never think about the body is 75% water, you know? 75% water and the earth is 75% water. So when you think about God, you think about, you know, the things that we go through as human beings, you know. Every time God make a move, it's, it's, it's to, to, to tell a story. You know, when a baby die, a lot of people get discouraged, but that just let God telling us, like, look, you better be grateful. This baby ain't nothing but two days old, died from career death, and you're still here. That's real. Right. But you're talking about, man, I got it hard. You know, that baby never even got to see hard times. You know, we think about cancer, you know, and people surviving. We don't look at the cancer in the survival. We look at look at God. That's you know, real. That's what we got to say. Look at God. So God, you know, He would show His mercies through He show His mercy through people like yourself and myself who've been in the criminal justice system, through Boosie who had cancer, through Miss Taylor, you know, who had cancer. You know, so a lot of times God is just speaking. You know, God speak to man through man. That's real. You know what I'm saying. So a lot of times you have to be willing to ascertain the wisdom. You know, I always tell people, you know, you can be strong and you can control the weak, but the wise control the strong, you know. And when Solomon was asked, you know, by God, what do you want? He said, I want wisdom. I want to be wise like you, God. Wow. That's what Solomon said. Out of all the stuff he had. He want wisdom. He just wanted wisdom. So, you know, it's a lot of wisdom in the things that we see, but nothing just happened. Everything that's happening is happening for a reason. You know, us being here, she was just talking about Jay Morrison. Uh, mm. Yesterday, you know, we had God a discussion, and you know, uh, uh, I said you need to come to Boss Talk. You need to be here eight o'clock, you know, because uh, my man E is in town, and bam, Jay Morris is here. Nothing just happens. Nothing like just happened, man. You know, the thing is, I just went like I said, I went out with Carlos Miller last night. And we all was hanging out, and mm -hmm. and uh, they see the show, man. You know mm -hmm. how we doing, so mm -hmm. you know people know, and and you know it's a solid uh, uh, situation where. You know, I think it's for our culture. We get to tell our own story like I always tell them. You know, it's a lot of people that they, you know, it's not as organic. And, and we're trying to get there as a team, as a people. Right. Um, all the podcasters, we, we get to tell our own story now. And it's something where if we can make it right, you know, we can help a lot of people that's coming up behind us. Yes. The younger children never had nothing to see to even go by. Now we got something where we can show the kids a way that they can see a way out. I'm talking about teenagers. We already got so much stuff going on on the internet. Why not give them a chance to see something that can really give them something that where they can see a seed planted and then it grow? And that's why uh, Miss Taylor and the Hip Hop Fraternity is concocting a free Boosie campaign. Yes. And so, Miss Taylor, can you please <clears throat> tell them some of the accolades of some of the people that you work with? Because People mm -hmm. see you, but they don't know who you are. Can you give them a synopsis of yes. some of the things okay. you've done? Yes, okay, well, from the entertainment side, currently right now I am working with Drummer Boy. He is a Grammy Award-winning producer. Um, he is amazing, right? He's the, he's the hit master. So I work with Drummer Boy. I work with Detroit Barbie. She's an up-and-coming artist out of Detroit, but she's making a lot of moves. She's charting. She's doing it big. I just signed on a client from the Bad Boys Club the other day, um, Big Lou. He has some good projects coming out. Of course, I am the publicist of the Hip Hop Fraternity. But then I have a couple, couple, a couple of corporate clients in there. We have Derek Automotive, which is the first black electric car dealership here in Atlanta, Georgia, and they 
manufacture and they patent technology for electric electric cars. So that's one of our others. Um, Derez Deshawn, Rich Soul. Oh goodness, the list the list is long. But yeah. I'm grateful. I work with a, um, a few movie clients. You got the Urbans, and the list is very long. But I'm grateful overall um, in my career. I've helped about 200 plus people start businesses, but in the entertainment field, I've helped about 15 clients in a year. And I also was uh, awarded the Best, uh, PR, PR of the year, and I've only been doing it a year uh, and a half. So just grateful, just super grateful. Yeah, super that's grateful. hard, I like it, man. What do you, you think about that, Miss Jamaica? It sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. That's when I met y'all, I was doing fashion. I know. And I was working with some celebrity guests, and you guys had all this amazing stuff going on in Vegas. So to be here, and we both grown so so yeah. fast in a little bit of time, I'm honored. I'm Man, honored. we still own the clothing stores. We still do that as well. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's just a thing where you got to realize. We work with AI, too, right? Yes. Oh, you work with yes, AI? Yes, I do. Uh, so the guy, the gentleman, Doc? Yeah. Yes, I actually have uh, another person here with us, um, Doc. He has some amazing technology that just really helps your life a lot easier. Really? You have a corporate company. Yes, yeah, so we work with IT and technology and, again, developing different software. So, yeah, we're also on that side of things. That's good. That's good. The so, last thing, go ahead. Uh, I want her to talk about uh, the hotel <laughs> that we're dealing with, the VR, with the young lady double O and so we're doing some, it's so many amazing things. Um, we're going to be doing some amazing things with the metaverse, you guys. NFT. Um, digital museums, making sure you're able to see and feel a part. It's all about giving you interactive. You know how everything's so interactive nowadays, right? You go into these games and you put the glasses on, you're able to see. So we want to create, we're going to create a museum um, that's super interactive where you could come into and you could visualize, but then there'll also be an online platform, like a metaverse where you could see as well as some of the interviews that we do. You know, so you guys had your own space in there and people could probably watch your interviews and things. So there's just some amazing things that we're cooking up with technology, entertainment, corporate and music. Um, we're integrating them all together. We're not gonna stop. We're not gonna stop, guys. We're coming hard. Man. That's right. Well, I tell you right now, man, you know, uh, it's just a blessing, man. I know this guy right here, he don't stop. You know, yeah. I've seen so many different people that he brought on the platform and blessed them and showed them away and got them yes. on the show, man. You know, it's it's, it's not easy to get on Boss Talk 101. It, yeah. it, it, it's, you have to be chosen. It's very, we're very selective on who we bring on this show. And um, th we do it for a reason because, you know, I, I walk by the spirit, first of all. It's hard to just pick anything, you know yeah. what I mean? It ain't about money, you can't pay your way. We've been offered so much money for people to come on, we just don't really get out like that. It's more about just picking the right people. You know, you guys are dope. You you hang with this guy right here, <laughs> HHF, man. And, HHF. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's the whole game. You know what I'm saying? So, man, like, when you first put HHF together, I know Ice T told about how you guys, when we was in Jersey, mm -hmm. how you guys came up with it. Like, was it, was it something that, because you, you don't seem like you look back. Once you start moving forward on something, you decide on it and you go at it, man. Like, how has it been? How's this journey been? Has it been everything that you thought it would be? Okay, the best example I can give you, the hip hop, you know, is you think of Tyler Perry films, right? You think of him purchasing BET. Yeah. And, uh, you know, VH1 as well, yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, now he's going to control black entertainment, right? Mm. Which is respectfully so, right? Because he's a black man. He should control it. So I know that the word hip-hop, you know, kind of came from New York. And it was found, you know, back in the day uh, by Syria Robinson, you know, with Big Bang Hank, you know what I'm saying? And it's a couple more, you know, theories on that, you know. But we know that, you know, uh, Grandmaster Flash was one of the founders of the word hip-hop, hip-hop in the culture. And then the culture kind of morphed into a business and... You know, uh, we see a lot of people, you know, that's uh, in control of the culture, mm -hmm. you know. And culture they, vultures. And, 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 and they run, you know, they run the business. So but what I decided was, I said, first of all, let me lock down the business. So the first thing I did was I, I locked the domain name down. Once I locked the domain name, I locked the trademark down. Then I locked all of the other things that uh, was domain connected to the hip-hop fraternity. Because if you don't, she says, the culture vultures, what they do, they go and purchase it. So once we had the foundation set, we had the plumbing, we had electricity electricity connected, then we could start building up the stories. So the first story was the social media. The second story is, uh, you know, the radio. The third story is the clothing. Then we went to the magazine. We went to HHF Hip Hop Attorney Museum, Hip Hop Attorney uh, 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 
uh, Hall of Fame, Hip Hop Attorney Cafe, Hip Hop Attorney Virtual Reality Hotel, you know, and you build that story. And that's what Dr. Clark Anderson was talking about. You know, you got to build your foundation first. Once you get the foundation, and then you can start labeling things. You know what I'm saying? So when we say Hip Hop Fraternity Cafe, you know, it's no different than saying Little Cuba Cafe, a Little Mexico Cafe. It's no difference than saying Starbucks, because that's how big we gonna be. Man. Starbucks, <laughs> so you know, that's the, the play, is for us to control you know, everything hip hop, you know, it's our culture, our call. So that's what you see going on with BET. You know, that's what Tyler Perry is doing. But everything happened in succession. It was a chronological process, you know, it wasn't just happening. You know, so as you begin to see the HHF morph, it's gonna morph into a conglomerate. It's gonna be a big old enterprise. You know, you're gonna see uh, uh, different states and different countries screaming hip hop fraternity. You're gonna see various business in in entities. One thing I always teach you, young brothers, I hope they get this. This is what I always tell people. Hip Hop Attorney is a brand. Nike is a brand. So when you think of Nike, think of Michael Jordan, Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, uh, uh, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, right? These are brand extensions. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Lenox Mall, you see what? You see a Nike outlet. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So all these are connected to the what? The swish. Everybody, everything I just mentioned about the Hip Hop Attorney is connected to the shield. You see what I'm saying? So we a brand. You know, this hotel, you know, uh, I don't want to say the name, yeah. but let's say the Hyatt <laughs> or let's say the Marriott. Those are not brands. You know, those are businesses. You know what I'm saying? But Nike is a brand. So that's what the hip hop fraternity is. It's a brand for us, by us. Yes. And if we don't take control of our culture, then, you know, somebody, to, when I remember I was in college many, many years ago. It had to be about at least 30 years ago. I was in college and, um, they was talking about uh, jazz. I was studying jazz. I was studying m the music. And uh, the professor said, in 30 years, if African Americans is not careful, Miles Davis would be white. That's wow. what he told me. He said, that's how culture moves. You know, you think about, have you ever heard of Percy Julian, the mm. Forgotten Genius? Y'all look it up, Percy Julian. Percy Julian, you know, they tried to steal one of his patents. So it would, when you do patents, you know, in chemistry, right, you got to have original chemistry. It's got to be original original formula, right? So he created this formula, but he purposely kept it all one degree. So when they stole it, he knew they was going to steal it. When they stole it, what Percy Julian did, he took them to court. And this was a prestigious award. And when you win this award, your name get plastered through the, out the media around the world. You know, you get this big old plaque and everything. So Percy Julian, he purposely did that. He was playing chess, not checkers. And, that's, mm. and as African Americans, that's what we got to do. We mm. got to play chess, not checkers. So when they went and they tried to argue the point, he said, okay, test it. When they test it, it didn't test properly. He gave them the actual formula and it showed that he was the original maker of that formula. But he was progressive and intelligent enough to know that he had to be sharp as a butcher knife. He had to be the sharpest pencil and a pencil sharpener. You know what I'm saying? So when we think about you know, things like that, we got to understand that people will steal our culture. Wow. You know, culture vultures. I'm glad you, you I'm glad you, you you brought it back to that. Um you you went crazy on my show when when you spoke on Vlad. Um you with me I mean I did almost a million. So did views Tyrese. <laughs> no, I, what I'm gonna ask you about it, and then I text you and I showed you what Tyrese has said and, and I was like, man, you know, I say Ken already said this. I said, um, what's his name said this as well? A Columbus Short. Mm -hmm. You know, y'all all them came on my the, show. The Muslims got on them too. About, yeah, talking about talking Paracon. about Paracon. But when you seen this, you know, th just going back to Boosie, you know, he goes on Vlad a lot, you know. But now stories are coming out, and I don't know them to be true or not, but they're like, is he giving his information or is he working with them? Well, I'm telling you well, people. Well, 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 let me show you something, right? The first thing that Vlad placed on his on his He posted uh, site, it today. Let me finish. Let me finish. The first thing he posted was, Boosie will not be getting out of jail. The feds giving him multiple gun charges. Yeah. As though he was proud. Now, here's the same man that helped him build his platform. Boosie did all these interviews. You know, he got them hot. And now he's going to say, still is saying, Free Boosie, 
He said, Boosie got multiple charges. You know, so Vlad is really out of pocket for that. You know what I'm saying? He didn't I mean? say nothing about freeing him. He just no, said no. he showed he got multiple gun charges and no bond. Yeah, and, and, and that's why people people don't understand is that one of the most viewed interviews on Vlad, and he can lie about it all he want, it's my interview. I did an interview for that man 10 years. That shit did like 10 million. 10 million. It, 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 and it was organic because I don't control YouTubes. But YouTubes uh, came at me. You know, like I actually did something. They refused to let me monetize after that video because the video was his video was on his it was on his platform. on his platform. It did like ten million views. You know what I'm saying? So you know, when I called him, you know, to tell him, man, let's do another interview. He didn't answer my phone call. So you know, at the time I was young, I told you about that. So I like you know, like nigga, what's up? You know, man, what the fuck is up? You know what I'm saying, nigga? But you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know how to. Be diplomatic at this time. I didn't have problems. You was young, man. You, you know was younger. So I yeah. think that's what offended, but black. But that's what uh, kind of you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever caused a wedge. And I said, but you know, hey man, I man, fuck that shit, man. I don't have to be on black. I don't have to be on that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of my people is mad at black because they call him a culture vulture. That's what you I'm know saying. saying. They saying that he's still in our culture. That he's not keeping it real. Not keeping one hundred. And then he get asked to do. See, it was so crazy. I'm glad that that. We we brought this back up because the the time that he asked Boosie about was, the pimp, about did, the he, did, 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 did he know me and was the tape real? Boosie was already scheduled to go on Drink Champs the week next the next week and sure go on did. to go on a, a eighty five song with you and, okay. and on Beehive. So how you gonna ask a man that's signed to my literary agency? Do he know me and I'm study saying it in all the interviews like I'm some kind of sucker? You know what I mean? Like I'm lying about this man. And then when the man get on Drink Champs and say, yeah, Ken and Steve-O gave me the book deal, they put me on they put me on a game. I know he had to feel like an asshole, but see mm -hmm. that's. What Vlad do? Vlad, he starts some shit. You know what I'm saying? He'll say some shit. So, you know, <laughs> he'll say some shit so they can say, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck him, man. Hey, man, fuck this nigga. Fuck that nigga. And then it he gets the views happen. and he make money. You know what I'm saying? And that's where a lot of black people don't like about Vlad TV. It's like he's an instigator. He's instigating our people to try to pit our people against each other. Now, if I if Boosie would have said something negative towards me, that would have created a wrench between me and him. Or if Boosie would have said something. You see what happened with him and T.I.? Well, he asked Tyrese yeah. about, he asked, he asked Boosie about Tyrese after he offered Tyrese $10,000, according mm -hmm. to, to uh, allegedly, according to uh, Tyrese, that if he would come on the show, Tyrese turned the 10000 down, and then he asked Boosie, have you heard about this with Tyrese? Because, but, and, but, but and, and Boosie at, didn't look even Look at the T.I. situation. It. Boosie and T.I. had a record mm -hmm. coming together. Him and T.I. had a relationship. that kids and friends. And you know what I'm saying? You know, he know that Boosie, you know what I'm saying? He's going to speak his mind. You know what I'm saying? He's going he gonna, gonna, to try to inoculate that in the conversation to, cre to create this problem. And that's the problem I have with you, Vlad. You got to quit trying to cause confusion in our community Period. And, and all my brothers and sisters you know if you want my opinion until we get it right i i i, I urge y'all to boycott vlad tv boycott Wait a minute, so you want TV. you want to boycott them, i want them to stop watching that shit the man Cut, hey, don't hey, watch. hey what hey i got i got the, and i got the uh the uh what they call that uh dm to prove his his team yeah, you see yeah, that yeah, to me. Yeah, his team. You seen it? You yeah. got it. I, you got his team hit me up, asked me, do I want to come on the, the thing? I, I thought, you know, the man was trying to, you know, straight some bush. I said, yeah. So he didn't let me on there. So the other dude that worked with him, we did an interview, and that shit went viral. So the dude yeah. was like, man, Vlad don't want the interview. I'll take the interview. You know what I'm saying? Me? So, I mean, that's to me, that's some weak-ass shit. You know, why would you be mad, you know, about some shit that happened 12 years ago? And then why would you not have me on your show, but the only time you talk about me is when you uh, asking another person about, you know, do, is I'm telling the truth. Like Boosie the, knew, knew what was going on. Boosie went there with me and Pimp no. was there. So why would you ask Boosie, is that true? That ain't nothing that he should be asking Boosie, do he know me? And, and, and do, uh, 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 is it true that Pimp and Ken got seen a sex tape? How would he know that? Mm. That's circumstantial. How would he know that? You know what I'm saying? So that's the type of shit that I don't like about Vlad. And I see what Tyrese is talking about. He gonna talk about the man uh, child support. What the fuck his child support got to do with anything? Talking about some, you know, this man, you know, is this, this, that, and other. And Tyree, man, I support you, man. You know what I'm saying? Me and, 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 hey, hey, I'm team motherfucking uh, Tyree. Man, I like you ever, ever since baby boy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Look, and I was at Tyree's house. We did the campaign. Uh, we did the campaign with um, your guy who was just ran for mayor. Oh my gosh, on the tip of my tongue. Oh man, but we did all his whole, his whole campaign, and we did a launch party at Tyrese's house. So oh yeah, uh, I that's definitely like Kasim Reed. Kasim Reed, please yeah. forgive me, Kasim Reed. We did his whole campaign when he ran for mayor, and Tyrese was one of the people who supported Kasim Reed all the way through. So wow, he always man, you know, I, like I said, um, Vlad has, and I, and I I got to be the you know how you 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 go on to this other side. He's been in the music industry. DJ Vlad mm -hmm. is, is what they call him, and and I think that's the thing that ties him to the fact of he feels he can you know talk. And then you got Charlemagne the God. You got uh, different people who rock out with him. You know, uh, different people who support that. You know, like like I've seen him rock with him. But at the end of the day. I don't know how deep they, in, I don't know how their relationship go, but I just know the people I see that rock with him, you know? Well, you know, we as But black. I got a question, too. Because you said um, you were invited on the show, but it just, he just, it didn't fall through? No, they invited, I sent it to your husband. Right. They, so, they, but they, they invited they, me. They so, so you were going to go on there, right? Yeah, I, I was going to go on there and I was going to, you know, speak my mind. I was going to check Vlad. You know? Okay. I was going to check him and tell him, like, look, you know, you, anybody that know me, no, I'm real. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to be bullshit. I mean, I check gangsters. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I check killers every day. You know what I'm saying? So Vlad, you know, what is he to me? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you think I'm scared of Vlad? Mm -hmm. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want to go on the show. I want to talk to him. And, I, and, you know, I mean, you okay, since you're a culture vulture, do you know about the hip-hop fraternity, Vlad? Do you know what's going on in the black community? Do you know all the great things that we're doing? Do you know about all the kids that we let perform for free? You know what I'm saying? But you want to talk about all this negativity. Of course I want to go in there. You know, and if they would have aired it, so be it. But he know me. I yeah. speak my mind. And, and I'm going to tell you something. that he And, and, and it's, it's been done by a few people, you know. I got friends that have <laughs> been on there just for the smoke. You know, I okay. I got people who go to Vlad. Uh, you know, a lot of times he don't do it. it you, you be in a room somewhere, not even at his place. He won't even get in the room. Man, that dude don't. I was there when he did it, Grady. You know, Grady and Steve was my business partner. Yeah. So we brought Grady on to Vlad. Steve brought Grady on to Vlad. I was there with him. We was in the room, and Vlad was behind a, a camera. I looked at him on the camera. What's up, Vlad? He seemed like he's seen the ghost. And then his, his, his uh, assistant at the time, this before I made the comments, his assistant at the time said, say, man, Vlad Ken want to call you. So I talked to him. I said, so what's up, man? You know, what's up with the interview? You know what I'm saying? I mean, woo, 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 woo. Hey, man, you know, I'm busy. That's what he said. I'm busy. How are you not going to interview Ken Ivey when I got, you know, millions of, uh, of views on TV? I mean, I, in, the, in, the, in, the last, in the last, what, say, uh, maybe three, four, five months. I probably did about fifteen oh, to working. twenty yeah. interview, twenty view, twenty million views on YouTube's or better. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's that's content for your for your platform. But like I said, you know, he he probably still traumatized from when I checked him. I know Rick Ross had to go upside his head a couple of times, you know. And I know if I would have, you know, been younger, if I would have called him, I probably went upside his head too. You know what I mean? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being honest. When I was 31, I would have peeled Vlad head when I was 31. But, you know, I'm much older now, so, you know, I would never, wise, you know, I would never do that, you know, at this point in time. But, you know, you know, at that time, when I was a kid, when I was on, when, when, when Vlad, you know, didn't answer my phone call, I feel like he would treat me like a bitch ass nigga, like he was being disrespectful. And I went in on him, you know what I'm saying? And he know what happened, I know what happened, but like I said, you know, I'm a lot older now, and I was trying to, you know, ameliorate that shit, but you know, I mean, the dude just a coward, man, you know what I'm saying? He's scared to talk to me. Obviously, right? Yeah. I, I, I told him on your show that I want to talk to him, but yeah. he's scared to talk but, to him. And that did millions of views. That, that thing went crazy, man. Mm. So yeah. all, all I'm saying is, man, you know, at some point, Again, when I when I put this together, this was for us to be able to, and it's growing like crazy. Everybody from Carlos Miller, you, all of the people support me, the guy that just left here, Jay, you know, uh, different people. They fly in. Mike Bless, Country Wayne people, they fly in. They love Boss Talk 101. You know, and that's the big thing is that we do have a place to go. You know what I'm saying? We do have a way to tell our story. I'm gonna put it on them just like that. Yeah. You got big facts. You got uh, you got all these different Beehive. platforms. Be high. You got yeah. you got a lot. And you've been on all of those, man. Like uh, uh, drink champs. You know, at the no end of the jumper day, with my man no, you, yeah, no you know jumper. You went on there with him as well. Uh, plenty. Of, my plenty boy of, AD was on there. He left that peace, show. But, K Slay. K you know Slay. Yeah. Ed Lover. You know what I'm saying? This is fifty. You know this what I'm saying? This is fifty. Uh, Wendy Williams show. Yeah, I'd have been, been on every 
Everything that I say should be news, newsworthy because I've been on every major platform in the world, including CNN, NBC, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So for a person to not want me on their show, especially when I'm doing something positive for the culture, let me know they have to be a culture vulture. You know what I'm saying? I hear Damon Dad say these things. I hear people say these things, you know, towards other people, and I really don't know their business. But I can personally say that Vlad, the things that he do and the way that he was able to get money and pay certain artists to be on his, his show, it actually kind of killed the game. It made other people that was of less stature, people who had podcasts who couldn't afford to bring these same artists on there, it made it difficult for them to get those uh, 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 good interviews. So, you know what I'm saying? All that is just, you know, it's just the negativity that comes with live TV. You know what I'm saying, man? You know, like I said, you know, what, what made me go off, everybody going like, why can't going off on him like that? Because when I seen that post about Boosie, I showed it to her. Yeah. I showed it to her and I showed it to my uh, COO, Vado. I said, look at this shit. I said, this man didn't say free Boosie. Boosie got multiple <laughs> charges. Like he was like happy. And this is the man that actually helped you calipot your, uh, your, your platform. Your platform. To, to where, you know, it can be. And then, like you said, Tyreek offering $10,000. That's cheating. Yeah. That's cheating. People can come on Boss Talk for free. For free. People I've, can never, come on, I've never charged anybody. People can, come, people come on all of these different platforms for free, right? But because of what happened, because of the, the, the moves that Vlad made, it made it difficult for artists that's of less stature to come and promote themselves. I remember when the time when you could just hire your publicist and they can contact these platforms mm -hmm. and these platforms would now be they happy it. to have you on there. You know what I'm saying? Me. Now the artists, you know what I'm saying? Me, the major artists, you know what I'm saying? They charge, you know, and, and of course, you know, rightfully so, because a lot of these platforms is making money. But, you know, Vlad is the, he's the catalyst for that. He's the main reason why a lot of artists won't come on these shows. These shows. I, I, and, and to be honest with you, you make money, but at the end of the day, you have to apply the pressure. Ain't nobody just out here. I, I know the game now. I wasn't in the game at first, but you know, I really was sharp, you know what I'm saying, when it comes down to hustling and figuring things out. So when I look at the game now, you know, the algorithm, YouTube, different platforms, they, they scaling back. Instagram don't even pay anymore. So it's things like that that show you that they, they're shining back. But you have to be creative enough to make sure that you're able to stand and your brand is able to go further by creating other avenues, whether it be Patreon, or all these other different avenues you use to try to figure out a way to, to even on now Instagram, you can, and I say this for my listeners, you can get people to uh, become members of your channel mm -hmm. and they'll pay monthly right. uh, $4 a month. So this is the thing that our people should be pushing now when they're pushing their, can their I Instagram. Can I say something right quick? Can go I ahead. say something? Vlad TV, look at me. <laughs> look at me. Let me take my glasses. Look at me, Vlad. Look at me. I dare you to do a free Boosie. I dare you to do a free Boosie campaign. I dare you. Just as, just how you always want them to come on your show to get your ratings up. Let me see you get your ratings up by saying free Boosie. And I want you to do it yourself. That's right. Don't do it behind a camera. Don't do it behind a, a, a veil. Say free Boosie. If you can't do that, then everybody in the motherfucking game to say fuck Vlad if he don't do a free boosie. Cause you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what you saying if you don't say free boosie, you say fuck Vlad. I mean fuck boosie. You know what I'm saying? Free boosie everybody, free boosie. Free what? boosie. Free, free boosie. boosie. Free boosie. Free boosie. Can I get everybody to say free boosie? Free, free boosie. boosie. Say that Vlad. Otherwise, you know what I'm saying, I me, mean, fuck you. So here's the game. So you saying that Vlad has to say, you know, free Boosie or people need to stop watching this show. Man, they need to stop watching because this man put a fucking post up saying Boosie got more charges. Why the fuck would he say that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean you know, I mean, he might have people that want to invest. He might have lawyers that might want to fuck with him pro bono. He might have some legal teams that might want to fuck with him. So the feds is already have a 95% conviction rate. So by you putting that shit up, you just further pushing people away from him. And still they're saying, free Boosie. You know, my main man, Boosie, you know, the guy that I do the most interviews with every other week, you know what I'm saying, is in jail, free Boosie. Right. But instead, this this dude, man, he gonna put a Boosie got more charges as though, you know, that's some shit your enemy would do. Like, wow. look at that's some hater shit. You know what I'm saying? Me? So, you and know. Press is important. And, it, and I wanna say one more thing, Vlad. I am not coming on your show. I do not wanna come on your show. I don't care for what circumstance, for what reason. Because you're not right, brother. You know what I'm saying? What you did to Boosie was out of order. 
what I'm saying? For you to put that post up, talking about Boosie got more charges, that was definitely out of order. And mm -hmm. it just as, 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 as eager as you was to have him on your show and to get your ratings up, you should have been just as eager to see that man free. That's right. Man, hey, man. Especially after he's beat so much. Wow. How you going to keep tearing somebody down? Come on now. The press is so important. It, it's so crazy, important. man. So I, important. I just, like I say, man, thank you guys for coming on the channel, thank man. You for so, us. Taylor, how, how, can, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Oh, super busy right now. Thankful, thankful, thankful. But my Instagram is I am Taylor Frusell. That is I A M T A Y L O R F R U C E L. As soon as you type in I am Taylor, grateful to usually pop up at the top. Um, you can also text me. I have a business number. You can text me anytime. It is 443-347-3239. And you can also go to thehiphopfraternity.com and see what we have up and coming for the Boosie um, I'm making of the autobiography of a celebrity featuring Ice-T, Boosie, and so many others. Again, I am Taylor Frusell on Instagram. And you can also go to thehiphopfraternity.com. Man, also, uh, let, me, let me just... I'm going to go back a little bit uh, into this Vlad thing. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Uh, um, so, Vlad, <laughs> listen, man, because you've made a hell of a challenge here on this show. You're saying that, you know, Vlad, i seen the post, too. But I really, you know, I didn't think into it, but mm. I'm I just more thinking about freeing him, you know. Right. More about let, when he going to get out. You know, this man got kids. You know what I'm saying? He this man got death family. Row. He beat death row. Uh -huh. this, but, but you think about his kid, like, like uh, what, what, the, what the little, little boy named? Little Tootie Ross. Little Tootie Ross. Yeah. Little Tootie, He's doing you know, so good in the industry right now. Be, he need his father. That's right. It's going to be a trip just trying to maneuver while his father's. It, it's going to mess with. He might act out. He might not. But it, it's a chance because a, he, 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 he values father so much. So much. They was together on a breakfast club. See, I that's think. what people not thinking about. You're not thinking about. He, you stripping this man from his empire. He yeah. feeds so many people. He take care of so many people. So many new artists is on that on his on his label. Y'all got to think about that. These they don't think about that. They yeah, just but trying Taylor, to strip they gonna, people. Uh, I can man, see the comments coming now. They're gonna be like, "Well, he shouldn't have had that gun." I can understand that, but this is but this is the truth. I'm just gonna tell you what they gonna say. We're gonna let the artists talk about it. We're gonna let the artists talk about it. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that next session. But but yeah, but I just had to say that because I know what's coming when you say all of these great things. Okay, look at it like this, right? You know, when you think about you know your decisions, right, in life, right? Everybody got two decisions. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got two choices. You got. You know, you got two things in life. You got a choice and a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? I mean, your heart sends blood through your entire body. You know what I'm saying? You can't live without a heartbeat. And the Bible calls it a will. You know what I mean? You can't function without a will. So, you know what I mean? Some people will. Some people will not. Some people don't know whether they will or will not. You know, there's confusion in everything. But at the same time, you know, when a person, you know, do a certain act, you know what I'm saying? It calls a, every action bring about a reaction. reaction. So you know what I'm saying? I mean, what you're seeing, you're seeing the reaction of what's going on and what's happening. But what people don't talk about is that, you know, a lot of these laws are draconian. You know what I'm saying? Draconian. You know, a lot of these laws are double jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these laws are geared to destroy a certain community. You know what I mean? Because who, you know, make a law which is the law, which I'm gonna talk about more depthly, that takes Boosie to jail. Who makes that law other than the person who must be planning to incarcerate somebody? Now this is something I will talk about. Ain't it ironic? Do y'all find it to be ironic that the state of San Diego, California, San Diego, California, dropped the charges and thereafter, the feds was there to incarcerate him? And then the media was right around the corner? Yeah, so, so. They so, plan to do that. You see that all the time in movies where the because they want um, the feds to pick it up, they have to drop it in order for them to do it. But one thing that we're gonna talk about in the next session, Ms. Jamaica, is that a lot of people don't understand is that the minute that he was in that car, it became a federal case. And I'm gonna talk about that more in depthly. But you know what I'm saying, that's what young people need to know. But Free I, wait, but I, wanna, I wanna hear Free this boosie. challenge one more time. Uh, what was the challenge again? My challenge to you, Vlad, Mr. Vlad TV. This is my challenge to you. I want you to do a video saying free Boosie. Just like you say, Boosie, come to my show, and you is eager to have him on your show, I need you to do a, 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 the same thing as far as free Boosie. 
If you can't do that, then fuck your show. I want everybody to abandon this man's show because this is something that have to be addressed. And right. I'm going to be one of the OGs to stand up. This is an OG call. You know what I'm saying? This is an OG call straight up out of Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of people know me from the streets, and y'all know I'm talking directly to the streets, you know, not to people you know who may not understand what's going on. If you're just a civilian and you're a regular person, you want to watch flat TV, that's your prerogative. I'm not asking those people. I'm talking about but the people that's out there in the gutter like Boosie, that's out here in the mud, getting it out the mud, and not up under the rug, but out the mud. You know what I'm saying? I mean, in this game so deep that you got to crawl in your shoes in the morning to get up. Mm. I'm talking about y'all. I'm talking about the people, you know what I'm saying, me, who really, 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 really pat their feet on the, the concrete. Culture. Yeah, the, the culture. The culture. Stop following Vlad if he don't usher a free Boosie campaign, video. Period. Campaign. Wow. Wow, man. That's that's it, man. I, 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 done, got, I done, done enough now. Free Boosie. Let's free go. Boosie. Taylor Frustell is out. Thank man, you so hey, much, man. Boss thank Talk. you guys. Hey, thank you guys for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.